hello and today we're going to talk about gene expression and cell differentiation so how the genes that we have express themselves as our body and cell differentiation meaning like what are the different jobs that your cells have for your body sorry about the bell okay the first thing that we need to do is add some questions if you are using your handy dandy graphic organizer that you got in class and glued into page 132 then you can write these questions around the side, um, or if you're taking Cornell notes, of course these would be great for the left-hand side. So the first thing I want you to think about is how can these cells that have very different functions have the exact same DNA in the nucleus? And how does the cell or the body use the exact same set of instructions to make different structures? So we're using like the same blueprint and we're making different things. How does that work? First, we need to review, um, and we should be able to answer these questions by now. How does DNA specify for traits in an organism? And how does DNA tell the cells what to do? In junior high, we know the nucleus, it's the boss. Well, the nucleus does nothing other than hold the DNA. It's the DNA that tells things that to do, but how does it tell it to do the things that we need? So for information in DNA, um, remember that it's in triplet codes for one amino acid. Those are called codons and amino acids linked together to form polypeptides, which are proteins. Poly means many, and peptides is a type of bond, so these are many peptide bonds of amino acids making a protein. Right? Genes code for polypeptides that control things such as your expressions, like how you look, um, your functions of a cell, and of course other genes. Very, very small actually code for proteins, even though proteins do all the work in our body. All right, so this should look kind of like your graphic organizer. Remember that with the central co or the central dogma, we start with DNA that is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins. Now, proteins regulate gene expression, they control our traits, and they control cell function. So what we're going to look at today is not what happens here, which um, outside the gene regulation box, um, but what happens inside the, the regulation box that we can change. Okay? The first thing that we can change is we can modify the DNA. And I want you to write under here things on how we can do to modify the DNA. And the first thing that we can do to modify the DNA is move it around. Um, sections of DNA called transposons can be moved from to different chromosomes so we can move those around and, and see what happens and what our offspring would look like. We can also change them chemically um, to turn parts of the DNA on or off. So we can change the histones, we can have epigenetics happen or the epigenome where you have environmental effects happening to your DNA um, and then of course methylation. Um, gene regulation at the DNA level happens in eukaryotes and rarely ever in prokaryotes. So prokaryotes DNA is so simple that you don't usually have a modification happening. Um, remember that epigenome is derived from the Greek word epi. Epi means above the genome. You may remember um, epidermis, like your skin, is um, on the outside of your body. Um, and so epi means above, which meaning it's above genetics things can happen to your body. This is where they consist of, or we have an epigenome consists of chemical compounds that modify, mark the genome in a way that it tells what to do and where to do it and when to do it. Like, when do you go through puberty? Hello, epigenome. Different cells have different epigenetic marks. Um, you usually see, for example, puberty happening with females earlier on in life than boys. And then the environment causes our changes in epigenetics, and this refers to how even if you're in identical twins and you have different environmental factors that you're exposed to, that you may have different um, outcomes in your life, health, and body um, based on epigenetics. Okay, so going to a, a diagram here, epigenetic me uh, mechanisms, we have development, things that happen to you when you're in utero, um, if the mom is taking medicine or drugs that affect her child, um, or if there's any problems there in chemically in utero, um, environmental chemicals, 
different drugs and pharmaceuticals that you may take. Of course, aging and diets can affect your um, epigenetics as well. If you overeat and become obese, then this can definitely um, affect you. The next thing we have is methylation, or excuse me, methylation. This is where um, you can have some dietary source and can tag DNA and activate or repress certain genes if you, your body needs more or less of something depending on what you're eating. Um, we also have histone modification. Histones are just little proteins that your DNA wraps around kind of like a, a spool is to thread and you wrap thread around a spool. So the histones can be all clumped together and make it very dense and therefore we can't code that part of the DNA versus if it's relaxed and we can. Then of course we have um, the epigenetic factors, cancer, autoimmune disease, mental disorders, diabetes. These are factors that can hook onto the histones, change what is available to code, and then therefore change what gets coded in our body. A little bit scary. Next, we have cell differentiation. So this is the second part. Cells divide and differentiate into different jobs. Just kind of like you're a student, you may not know exactly what you wanna be when you grow up. An undifferentiated cell or a pluripotent cell means that it's not sure what it wants to be when it grows up. Whereas unipotent cells mean that they have one job. These are you know, cells of the immune system, these are cells of the nervous system, and these are cells in the circulatory system. But before you become a true human fetus, you are a b big ball of cells, a blastocyst, if you will. And some of these inner mass cells are, they don't know what they wanna be when they grow up. And so they still need to differentiate and figure out what their jobs are, all right? It is the genes that switch um, what gets turned on or off. So if you're going to be a heart cell, obviously anything needed for the heart gets turned on and everything else gets turned off. So depending on what the job is, then we will read that type of DNA. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about on your um, graphic organizer is the transcriptional regulation. So what can we do during transcription to change how the DNA is then expressed controls our traits and controls our cell functions. So remember this also happens in the nucleus. Um, it reg transcriptional factors turn transcription on or off or increase it and decrease it depending on what we need. This happens in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Prokaryotes also do transcription. And we do this with operons. Operons are basically sets of genes and regulatory sections that turn on the um, gene or turn it off. So here we have this operon where once it hits RNA polymerase, then we can actually use this gene and make a protein. So prokaryotes, we can through transcription turn genes on and then we, we can also turn genes off. So here's a regulatory promoter saying, no, we don't need any more of this. So it will not connect. Um, here we make this gene saying regulatory protein, we go transcription. When we get this protein here, it connects to the operator and then we do not turn this gene on. So the gene is turned off, all right? Eukaryotes, on the other hand, it's a little more complicated, but the same like, basically idea that you can turn genes on. See how we have to have many more regulatory factors or we can turn genes off, okay? Next we have the post-transcriptional control. We have RNA, which after transcription, we can code the RNA and see what kind of proteins we get. If we change the proteins, obviously that changes the gene expression, the traits, and the cell function. And with post-transcriptional control, we already have the mRNA. So now we're changing the mRNA. You have introns and exons, okay? Notice what ends up in the mature mRNA, only the exons. So the exons are what gets moved out of the nucleus. The way that I remember this is that exons exit the nucleus. The introns stay in the nucleus. Ah, there's the trick, all right? So we can change this even after transcription to figure out what genes we're going to express. Okay, not all of our DNA codes for mRNA and then translates into protein. Some DNA codes for non-coding RNA and this plays a very important role in gene expression. Some examples are tRNA, which hands, 
helps in translation, doesn't code for a protein. rRNA, which helps with translation, doesn't code. Um, neuroRNA prevents translation from happening. Um, cRNA destroys mRNA molecules. So those mRNA molecules, when we're done with translation, what are, where do they go? Well, the siRNA destroys them, as well as the snRNA that helps splice exons together during mRNA processing. So taking all those exons before and gluing them together, we need an RNA to do that. Those are non-coding RNA. The next step we're going to go through is translational regulation. So after we trans, or once we translate, that will affect our proteins, which regulates our gene expression, our traits, and our cell functions. I think you're probably getting it by now. Translational regulations um, prevent the synthesis of proteins. So this is a prevention piece. For example, regulatory proteins bind to specific sequences in the mRNA and prevent ribosomes from attaching. If the ribosome cannot translate, then we will not make a protein. Um, this happens in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. So the next one is protein modification. Obviously, if we change the protein, then we can regulate our gene expression, our traits, and cell functions. So proteins are chemically modified. We can fold them after we're made. they're made. These chemical mechanisms can cause the folding of process to change, therefore altering how the protein will be expressed. So if the protein is very specific and it can't do its job, then it will not be useful. Um, Overarching here, proteins are used to regulate the gene expression during transcription and translation. This means that gene expression helps regulate gene expression. That's right. If our proteins don't work here, then we can affect translation and transcription, which therefore affects our proteins as well. Um, some cool little piece of technology that I'd like to show you, it's pretty artistic if you think about it, is it helps scientists understand the differences in different cells, types of cells, despite the fact that they have the same DNA. Basically with microarrays, we can look at a particular cell and we can see what parts of the DNA code are turned on or off or are in transition. And then we can look at the same person's DNA, but from a different cell purpose, and see what genes are turned off and then or on in their own picture. So with the, the microarrays, we can see what each cell needs, even though they're from the same person. So it's pretty neat to, to see what's going on there. And it's a pretty picture. Well, I hope you learned something today, and I hope you're ready for your quiz tomorrow.